Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we're so excited to be with you again today for our second day of the Athletes and Social Change Forum. My name is Erin Herbert, and I am the Director of Programming and Education at the Muhammad Ali Center. And let me start by saying that the Muhammad Ali Center, as always, is so incredibly honored to be a co-host on this um, important conversation and program. I really want to thank all of our partners. Um, I want to thank Matt Meyerson, who's been awesome this entire time in planning, Dr. Mary Hums, who's been a longtime partner of the Ali Center, um, Mentor National, I should say, David, you and Mentor National, um, as well as our, as our co-partner um, organizationally. And then, of course, uh, Eli Wolf who has been um, just the champion of this program for many, many years and a, a real friend to the Muhammad Ali Center. So thank you to all of you. Um, at the center, our job really is to carry forth the legacy and ideals of Muhammad Ali um, and his work as an athlete activist, as a humanitarian. Um, we generally frame our work around the six core principles that guided Muhammad throughout his life. Confidence, conviction, dedication, giving, respect, and spirituality. Um, those of you who haven't been able to join us in person, I hope you're able to come to Louisville someday and experience the center in person. But you'll find an experience that doesn't just celebrate Muhammad uh, as the champion, Muhammad as the GOAT, but the center is really meant to be a space of inspiration, a space of learning, um, a space to gather people together to have challenging conversations to address the most pressing issues of our time. Um, and that was Muhammad's intention. He really wanted Louisville and the Muhammad Ali Center to be this incredible space to bring people together and to figure out how we were all going to make the world a better place fundamentally. Um, of course, uh, Muhammad used every ounce of his platform as an athlete, um, as a champion to create a better world, to promote uh, respect, hope, and understand, understanding, to stand up for certain causes, to stand up for people. Um, so athlete activism is, is a core part of our work. Uh, we have several programs that look specifically at sport and social change. Um, one particular program is called Champions Aren't Made in Gym. I'm, gyms, I'm sure you all know the reference there, where we work with sports teams and athletes to figure out how they can use their platform to go out and create positive social change in their communities. Um, last year, we really put that idea into action. And um, at the center, we worked with another organization called the Trident Swim Foundation. And we established our first athletics program to, to come out of the, the Muhammad Ali Center. It is called the Ali Stingrays, and it's a swimmer scholar program. We work with young people, primarily students of color, who come to our program with little to no swimming ability. Um, we teach them to swim. They become a USA swim team and uh, we're getting them ready to compete. It's also a scholarship and a citizenship program. So our athletes are expected to, um, of course, work on their academics, uh, but they're also representatives of Muhammad's legacy. They carry Ali in their, in their name, in their team name. So we're cultivating the next generation of, of athlete leaders who will use their platform like Muhammad to go out and make change. Um, I just want to say personally, that's been such a inspiring program to me to see sport and mentorship and, and athleticism and all of it come together under Muhammad's legacy. Um, it, it's, it's been life-changing. It's been life-changing for me, and I think it's been um, life-changing for some of our students who've been involved. So on that note, I'm really incredibly excited about our conversations today. We have a, a powerful lineup of speakers and I cannot wait to, to dive in. So thank you all so much for being with us today. And I will turn it over to our partner at Mentor National, Mr. David Shapiro. Thank you so much, Aaron, uh, and to you and um, everyone at the Ali Center, we are, it is, you talked about the Stingrays, right, carrying the moniker of this legacy. I think we feel 
uplifted and we feel the gravity and responsibility of partnering with you all and, and sort of partnering with the Ali name and the Ali Center um, to pull off something that really talks about athlete voice and social progress together. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't also thank Eli and Mary and uh, Jeannie and the whole team there um, and Matt on our team um, for what has been pulled off here. I was joking beforehand that it was not that many years ago that Eli walked in, you know, came into our, our office and said, you know, uh, what do you think about International Mentoring Day? And ever since then, it has been like everything Eli touches or leads, it, uh, it has been a force of will. Um, and it has built every year more and more, bringing more amazing people into the fold. Um, and what topic, uh, what voices yesterday um, could be more germane to this moment, whether it is about the fierce urgency of now or whether it is about athlete voice, which, right, you know, the last 24-hour news cycle um, has been captured by athlete voices in a lot of different directions. And I think we could probably pick any 24-hour news cycle uh, where athlete voices are, are looming large in, in every single direction, um, but certainly the way in which the platform can be used, which was so well explored uh, yesterday, um, is so important. And I know if you've got kids thinking about mentoring and intergenerational, or you've got young people in your life, family, non-family, um, so many are captivated by the platforms of athletes. Um, you know, and, and so much mentoring that goes on might be through those day-to-day -day relationships that mentor works so hard on, but so much is also experienced through other mediums and platforms as we are all experiencing in the world right now and trying to interpret the words and ways that people use their voices, the choices that they make. If you think about the choice that the NBA made to shut down kind of their league before a lot of the world was shutting down and a lot of America was shutting down and the way in which that led American society to think about what this virus might be. And also now the choice to play, you know, and all these different choices that are made in sport are so often what lead us to, to think about where we're headed. So many of our partners, um, you know, like the Campaign for Black Male Achievement and their Rumble Young Men Rumble have done powerful events at the Ali Center, which is such a place that, you know, celebrates those principles that Aaron spoke about. Um, and it's an honor you know, to be convening virtually with you now. We dream of days when we can convene physically uh, to celebrate social justice and change and hopefully celebrate this moment, you know, in which we hopefully uh, took the crack open of the door, as one of my colleagues said, and kick it in um, for social progress and change in a way that we have, I think, been resistant to fully throw ourselves into uh, as a society. Um, you know, obviously, Bill Russell's name was mentioned a lot yesterday. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't connect uh, Bill's founding of Mentor alongside some business leaders in 1990 um, with, you know, that iconic picture of he and Lou Alcindor at the time, Kareem, and others standing behind Muhammad Jim Brown, um, you know, showing that there is a vein that runs through social progress in sports that is as long as the history of sports it is often where barriers have been broken. It's where voices have been lifted. It's where others have been humanized and dehumanized. Um, and it has shown kind of our stubborn resistance to change. It's funny, we, we, we quote this line from Bill. And I, I want to connect it to this moment because I think it really does. Um, he said there's no such thing as other people's children. Um, it's a clarion call to us. And I think a lot of times it feels warm, <laughs> as mentoring often does. It feels warm and caring and nice. And it should, this idea that we're our brother's keeper. Um, but I want to also draw it to this moment where we talk about systemic injustice and we talk about structural racism. Because actually Bill's answer in that moment was to a systemic question. It was a question uh, at an open forum in Texas from a man who said, um, why should I be paying taxes to build someone else's child's school? My children are through school. And Bill's answer was, someone paid taxes to build that school for your children. In the United States of America, there's no such thing as other people's children. He wasn't telling us all to put our arm around kids, although that would be a good thing. 
Um, he was telling us to think about the way in which all of our children's destinies are intertwined. And that a decision you make only for your child, which we can all admit to having done before, which is often met with some sort of fierce complimentary nature. Oh, you're there for your child. You're doing everything for your child. It might be at the detriment of another child. And unless you think about the destiny of all children, uh, we are not realizing the full percent, the full potential of America. Um, and so we have to make systemic choices that lift all young people, not only our own. And that's what he was saying. And that's what this moment calls for, to make the systemic and structural decisions that rewrite and rewire uh, with a country's fate. Um, you know, we, we, we heard so much yesterday um, about athletes using their voices. Um, and it is, it is just such a privilege for us to intertwine the power of connection and relationship. The fact that none of us discovers these things by ourselves and that our most powerful ideas are usually informed through the voices and experiences of others. Mentors get that experience, right? That's the ultimate gift to a mentor. It's obviously the ultimate gift to a mentee as well, but we miss that it. it's the ultimate gift to a mentor. To be informed by how a 15 year old young man is walking through the world, that will enrich you and make you understand the world and the systemic pressures in ways that you will never understand otherwise. You will be informed to fight in ways that you could never understand. No one has a monopoly on wisdom or human experience. That is the ultimate beauty of human experience. And so when we see the world through another's eyes, it's so powerful. And that's why we chose together with these folks on the screen and so many others to link kind of the outsized voice and platform of athletes and the amazing wisdom of athletes and their own experiences with the idea of relationship and mentoring and connection and what those two things all combined can do. Because we're not walking this road alone and we've got to live and learn through, enough, through each other's experiences. I would just tell you, you know, coming up, you're gonna hear in another session from some of my colleagues, um, a guy named Dudney Silla, one of our program directors, um, and Dr. Tori weeston certain who uh, has really been a game changer in the mentoring movement around thinking about critical race theory and mentoring and thinking a lot about, she has this great analogy, I know I won't steal her thunder because she's got so much wisdom, but about we can't just tell people to kind, young people to kind of gut it out. We have to think about cleaning the toxic air so that they can thrive in it, not gut through the toxic air, but it's our job to help clean the air with them and understand where their experience is not being met with the opportunity to thrive and strive. So, you know, these are the things that mentor is committed to. And, and the primary thing I would say finally uh, to folks before I turn it back over to Eli um, is to say that if you want to on-ramp into the mentoring movement, if the issue is I don't know to where to get started with a program or with mentoring a young person or with mentoring across race, generation, and gender, we are here for you. The invitation we set out in 1990, which we evolved to today, is to say, if you want to get involved in being part of the movement that says every young person needs to strive and thrive through a web of relationships, we are here for you. We will help you activate. Or if you're already in that movement, let us support you in being even more active in it. That is our call to you. It is one of advocacy and policy and program and volunteerism and philanthropy and platform. Um, and we need it all. We need it all if we're gonna really realize that day when every young person has the relationships they need to strive and thrive. We're incredibly grateful to everyone here um, who's attending with their time. We often say, and, and we I would close with this, um, we sort of coined this phrase with the My Brother's Keeper Alliance in an ad last year, which is um, what you stand for, very much defined by who you stand with. So think about who you stand with, think about whose eyes you're seeing the world through, and then you get to stand for the things that you believe in. That's the way to really fulfill standing for, for the things you believe in. We appreciate you spending your time with us this morning, and we appreciate Eli and Mary and Aaron and Matt and everybody who's made this a reality. So thank you for mentoring, and Eli, I'll kick it over to you. Excellent, well, thank you so much. It's I'll fire it up, David, and 
really always so impressed and inspired by your comments. It's hard to follow you, but um, I'm just so happy to have everyone together and, and have this chance to convene. We had an amazing day one um, with just amazing athletes from all over and really just speaking powerfully about the power of mentoring. Um, and then here we are on day two, um, really coming together with thought leadership, fireside chats. Um, but this all, you know, really came together. Mary, uh, Mary here and I, we've been colleagues for more than 20 years. And, um, and then over the last, you know, probably 10 years, we started just rec realizing and recognizing how important the mentorship component was. And, and, and our mentor, one of our mentors, uh, Dr. Richard Lapchik, he um, introduced us and connected us uh, to Jeannie and to Aaron and to the Ali Center. And um, so that really became such a great opportunity to try to seed a project and an initiative around um, athletes and social change. And we had a broad lens on sport for development, human rights. Um, uh, you know, we looked at a lot of different elements um, and we decided, you know, as we evolved, um, the mentoring theme kept emerging. Um, and particularly, we, um, after a couple of years of doing the forum, we realized, oh, this would be really great. How do we keep amplifying? Uh, many of the presenters that we'll have today have been a part of this conversation and also many of the guests and attendees. You know, it's a really amazing community that's been forming, that's been coming together around these ideas of, of sport for development, human rights, social change, and how does mentoring fit in. And so I think the goal today is how do we really emphasize that? How do we make it even more intentional? How do we show the social the impact um, and, and really make a call to action so that, you know, we really think about every young person and what it means to have a mentor through sport and, and the role that athletes play. Um, but yeah, it's been kind of this really amazing journey and, and collaborating uh, with Dave, with uh, particularly Matt Meyerson, who's been an amazing colleague and friend. And, um, and it's been really fun just to work together from the mentor side and from the Ali Center side. Of course, the great team there. Um, it just led to so many different amazing projects and initiatives. Um, the one that's really wanted to speak to a bit is the International Mentoring Day that we've seeded as well um, through National Mentoring Month. Um, and that's also been a, a really special partnership between the um, Ali Center and Mentor and many other partners uh, globally as well to, again, to try to push and promote that power of mentoring and how it intersects um, with all of our other important issues and the human rights platform, the sport for development community, um, and kind of where does, where does mentoring fit in? And I guess, yeah, that, that was one thing I wanted to share was for, for me and, and how Mary and I, Mary's been an amazing mentor of mine, of course, and other colleagues, but we've also had uh, Dr. Lapchuk. And so I think from the seeding of this whole initiative and the legacy, um, kind of all been thinking about Dr. Lapchik and how he's inspired us in different ways. And so, you know, even just writing down like all the different ways that he has helped this field and helped it grow and his story and all that and how it connects to Muhammad and how Muhammad and his values and his story and his uh, legacy. Um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Mary. Um, I just wanted to kind of share on that personal level here, um, but I'm really looking forward to all the sessions we have uh, uh, from South Africa uh, first, and so we'll turn over to that shortly, but um, I wanted to turn it over to Mary now. So. All right, yeah, well, thank you. Um, yeah, this is, it's an amazing time and to be surrounded by amazing people. When you look at our program today, and again, thanks you know, to the Ali Center, everyone with Mentor National, Eli for making this happen. Uh, again, you know, for however many years we've been doing this and every year it gets richer, every year it gets better. Uh, but to be in this great company today, even though it's virtually, uh, is, is wonderful. Uh, you know, in a day like today, when we're thinking about mentoring, you know, it made me reflect back 
on how mentors have intersected with my life and what they've meant to me. And, you know, and yesterday was a great day, wasn't it? Yesterday was amazing. My goodness. The big name people that we had sharing their stories. And that's really important. And yet today I want to think, I want us all to think about their inspiration, but I want us also to think about the inspiration of the people near to us as well that help us. You know, I, I was thinking back even on my own life about, well, when did I have that first, when did I first have a mentor? When did I first thinking about, start thinking about social change? And I realized that when I was, okay, this is going to date me a little bit now, y'all. Okay. But when I was an undergraduate athlete, um, was right after Title IX was passed. And I went to an institution that was a primarily all-male institution and had been gone co-ed. And we fought a lot in order to get, you know, women's sports going. And I sometimes think, oh, maybe that's where it started. I don't know. Uh, and the woman that I worked with, who was uh, the women's athletic director there, she gave me lots of opportunities. Uh, she helped me build a network so that I, because so one day I wanted to become an athletic director. And at the time that was pretty unusual for women, but she gave me those tools as a mentor. Um, and I also was thinking about other people who mentored me. And I want all of you to be thinking about who those people are in your life today that mentor you. I, I think that's part of what we do today. But, you know, when I worked at, as an athletic director at St. Mary of the Woods College, a mentor, a sister Denise Wilkinson, you know, you, you think someone here, you know, our mentors would be famous athletes and big, no, no, you know, Sister Denise Wilkinson, our vice president for student affairs, who taught me the value of the dignity of every human being. She taught me that. Um, and then as I went on to become a professor, Dr. Pakyanath and Chela Durai, who was my um, dissertation advisor at, at Ohio State University, who taught me, you know, what you can do as a scholar. But he also modeled for me what I'm able to do now with my doctoral students, because I run the PhD program at the University of Louisville. And to be able to do that, that is a treasure, that is a gift, to be able to be in a position to do that. And I tell my doctoral students, when they're done, they go out and they become faculty members. A lot of times the last thing I tell them when they leave, try to give them a big hug. I hope I can still do that in COVID days. Give them a big hug and I tell them, it's your turn now. It's your turn now so that they can go out and they realize the importance of mentoring and what they can do then to touch the lives of young people, particularly in times like these, when um, young people need us to be models of Muhammad Ali's pillars to them, uh, models of what a good community can look like. Uh, so I think today we're gonna hear from people on, on the ground who are working with their programs, what they're doing on a daily basis, and the difference that that makes, you know, in, in people's lives, in young people's lives particularly, um, and how mentoring plays into that. So for me, it is a, it's a, a privilege to be here today with, uh, with everyone who's been organizing this, but everybody who is out there in, in virtual space listening to us now and watching us now. Uh, thank you for letting me be part of that, for letting us be a part of that. Um, so I am looking forward to one powerful day. Uh, and so I think with that, again, thanks to everybody. And I'm going to, I guess I'm going to turn it back to Eli now so we can get our day started. Thanks again, everybody. Looking forward to it. Excellent.